This is a response to Natasha. Thank you very much for uh, your video. Appreciate it. And it's a common question I get in emails or comments or uh, things like that about the unknown and the fear, the overwhelming fear that we have uh, when in regards to the unknown. That's why man has created uh, heaven and uh, all these magical places that you go if you're good if you're good and you obey uh, all these magical places that you go after we die we have such a deep-seated fear uh, of the unknown and this is I'm a big believer in evolutionary psychology when you understand our evolution and how we evolved and how we've adapted and how we survive one of the ways we survived back in the day is by not venturing too far into the unknown because if you had your needs provided for, you had food, shelter, clothing, why risk your life uh, by venturing into the unknown? Well, today in modern society, that's not the case. Um, back then, if you ventured in the unknown, you could risk your life and death. Today, you venture in the unknown, I mean, there, it's not to that extreme, uh, that uh, the consequences aren't as uh, grave. So... It is a natural human instinct to have this apprehension and fear the moment we have a, a major life change and do something different. I've my my username vagabond Steve has because I've vagabonded uh, many places and done things that were completely into the unknown. I just dived deep into the unknown, didn't know how they were going to turn out, and. Most of us aren't good at practicing that. It's almost like a skill. And as I had more experiences and say, oh, you know what? That's not so bad. Things work out. And the biggest obstacle is my mind and my thoughts in creating all these, you know, irrational fears that you get good at it and you get, you know, okay, that's not bad. And your, your ability to expand your risk taking uh, just increases as you practice this thing as you practice diving into the unknown. The problem is that most of us have a wall and we get blocked by that wall of fear. Well, in your case, Natasha, you're actually going and you're you're doing uh, your fears and you're taking uh, some risks and trying something new and that's awesome. Just realize anytime we step into the unknown, there is going to be fear. There is going to be apprehension. There's going to be doubt. There's going to be worry. And I saw, uh, actually on one of my bike trips, when I was doing my uh, solo bike trips, talk about stepping into the unknown when I did my um, 2,300 mile uh, by solo bicycle trip throughout the United States. Um, I saw a church sign and it said, uh, I've had many fears, 98%, which have never come to pass. And fear is like paying interest on, uh, or worry is paying interest on problems that never come to pass. And that's how life is. is our, oh, our, it's hard to fight an enemy that lives within our head. And that's what causes us the apprehension. And for the most part, our fears and our worries and our stresses really never come to pass, to come to fruition, and our suffering is self-created. Now, how do we deal with the suffering? How do we deal with these fears? Because I think it's a natural biological instinct, the moment you stepped into, into the unknown, to have apprehension, to have fear. And what do we do? Our first inclination is to fight it. Oh my God, I'm, I'm afraid to do this. And I don't know what if this happens and da da da. And then we fight those feelings. We say, Oh, I shouldn't be feeling like that. I don't like, cause you know, it has, a, it's a negative energy and we try to resist it. And what happens when we resist our fears and our worries is we create, give it energy. We give it momentum. We build it. We increase it. Anything that you resist persists. Um, try to resist not thinking of a pink zebra. Don't think of a pink zebra. I love that example. Don't think of a pink zebra. Don't, no, no, don't think, put it out of your mind, put it out of your mind. And the more you try to put that out of your mind, the stronger your the image of a pink zebra uh, comes to your mind. And it's the same thing with the fears. So what I found is a, a real, what works for me is just accepting it. You know what? I don't need to, it's okay. I, I'm afraid. 
It's natural. It's a part of my evolutionary psychology or biology. And I don't need to change it. I don't need to resist it. I'm just going to embrace the fears. And there's a great uh, quote from George Clooney in the movie Three Kings, where one of the younger characters, they're about to do a dangerous mission. One of the younger characters is really afraid, and he talks to George Clooney's character and says, I'm afraid, and what do I do, and things like that. And George Clooney says to him, no. Oh, the, the character says, I'm not courageous. You know, something I saw it a while ago, but I believe that's along the lines. And George Clooney's character says, no, that's, that's where you're wrong. Courage doesn't come before. Courage comes after you do the thing that you fear. And sadly, most people have such little practice in overcoming their fears and stepping out of their comfort zone that that becomes like a, a self-made prison. And I made another video called uh, Fear Chaser. And chasing your fears is part of exploring who you are and getting beyond and, and, and breaking the daily routines, habits, and just the rigor more of, uh, of daily life where we just you know have all these conditioned responses. That's how I discovered who I was, is stepping out of the comfort zone and diving deep into the unknown, into my fears. And it's exhilarating. You really do discover what you're made of, who you are, and it challenges you to grow, and you do grow from the experience. But there's no reason and there's no it's not necessary to have to feel courageous or to abandon your fears it's part of the self-protective uh, mechanism so i think that's the first step is uh just embracing it and saying you know what i'm afraid that's okay and then like you do just journaling it and having like this free write and it's the stream of consciousness where you just get all those fears onto paper and it, you don't need to analyze it. You don't need to judge it. You don't need to worry about it. Now, another uh, in emails and comments um, eh, that I get is uh, questions or, or a, a general theme is needing approval. You know, I want people. Nobody likes me. Um, this is very common uh, in, with my Life Sucks uh, video. Now, people, you know, everyone hates me at school. I'm the outcast. Or what will these people think of me? And when we're young, we don't have a strong identity of, of who we are. And we haven't been taught to have loyalty to our true self. And I, I was, at, from a very young age, I was a, a black sheep. And I remembered uh, when, I, when I was, I traveled through New Zealand, and I, I would always loved. There's sheep everywhere in New Zealand. You, you take the buses, cars, there's sheep everywhere. And I would love to find, to be able to find a black sheep. And I, I forgot what the statistic was. I think like one out of every 500 sheep is actually a black sheep. And what I learned is that I was happiest, and I didn't know this at a very young age because I'd always try to change and mold my personality to conform when I was young, because that's what, you know, then I'd fit in, then I'd have more friends and I'd feel accepted. But something deep within me just felt askew. It didn't feel right to change who I was in order to, to win the approval of others. And what I found is that when I was true to my colors, and I was a, okay, I was a black sheep and I'm just gonna be loyal and faithful to who I am and not base my identity on whether I get approval, whether I don't get approval, whether people like me. It's just, I'm just going to be me. And that is the best advertising you can do to meet kindred spirits. And, you know, I'm glad I grew out of that stage because I don't have the quantity of friends that most people do, but I definitely have the quality. And to dig your roots deep... I likely would not have made some of these connections had I put on the mask and said, oh, you know, hi, I'm doing this. Now it comes to the point, I just don't care. If you like me, great. If you don't like me, that's okay. Not everybody's going to like everybody. You know, I saw 
what movie did I see? Oh, I saw the movie Inception and I read all the reviews and people told me what a great movie it was. And I'm like, you know what? This movie is way too complicated. Uh, I feel like I need a, a, a user's manual just to understand what the heck's going on. And I didn't like it, even though it's made tons of money. It's a popular movie and it doesn't mean the movie was bad. It just wasn't for me. And it's the same thing. Not everybody's going to like you. And in fact, uh, Jim Carrey had a, I said this in one of my other videos, Jim Carrey had a philosophy where he would go on, when he was doing stand-up comedy, go on stage with the intention of being booed off stage because he didn't feel his in comedy could grow or mature or evolve if he was only looking for a laugh because then you're not going to take risks, you're going to say what's safe, you're going to say what people you think people want to hear and you lose all your sense of authenticity. And I think if the most important thing in your life is being true to yourself, keeping your authenticity, spending time alone in solitude to really get in touch with that part that deep part of who you are absent of approval or disapproval. And it's freedom. Yeah, I don't get I don't have a, a approval when I was growing up, especially I didn't have a approval like I would have liked. But when I had authenticity, that is what set me free. And I was able to find other people because there are other people that are wearing the masks as well. I mean, generally, especially in, in college and high school, everybody's wearing a mask. You don't even know who people really are anymore. Because everybody, oh, I want to get approval. I want to feed my ego. And once you put the ego to side, you can just have the space and freedom to be yourself. So if you're not getting disapproved of, that's what I would be concerned of. Because we're so concerned about being getting approval, rarely do I hear, I never heard people say to me or email me or, or write a message, you know what, I'm a little bit concerned I'm I'm not getting enough disapproval. Um, people, there's too many people that are liking me, and I'm I'm feel like I'm maybe staying in the safe zone, not speaking absolute honesty, not being true to myself. Because if you're true to yourself, if you're honest with people, you're gonna get disapproval. And now I look at it as, yes, I'm on the right path. Not that I seek it out and I'm obnoxious and rude to people, but I just know if I'm true to myself and living authentically, there's going to be many people that don't like it. Um, there's also a good book called Party of One, and it just teaches to embrace solitude. And once you embrace solitude, you love your own company, you're not afraid to be alone, you could spend the day sitting at parks, um, sitting in coffee shops, going out by yourself, and you enjoy your own company, that alleviates this pressure to to uh, need approval because, okay, people don't approve me. I, that's fine. I enjoy being by myself. I enjoy my solitude. I enjoy my own company. Um, yeah, the other advice, Natasha, that I would uh, give you is to continue journal writing and just trust your intuition, trust your inner voice, and really create a space between your mind and your ego and who you really are deep inside. The problem is we are spend so little time in, I don't know what you want to call it, prayer, but in just contemplation. We spend so little time and what ends up happening for people that spend little time in contemplation, they don't know that stop, that soft, still, quiet voice that is supposed to be our guide our signpost, what we tune into is that frantic mental uh, that monkey mind, as it's called in uh, Buddhism. We tap into that and that becomes our slave master. And so it's important every day to make time uh, in solitude and ask questions. You know, I'll ask questions to my, to, if you want to call it higher self, my inner guide, and it'll give me answers. And it's a soft, small voice, but if we start giving it attention and noticing it, it becomes strong and it becomes really um, a faithful companion uh, to guide us through the unknown. And to just know, think of in the past, all the fears we've had in our past, in our childhood growing up, 
you know, things always seem to work out. And uh, just trusting that, man. But I wish you the best on your uh, new path, your new adventure. And uh, look forward to hearing uh, your experiences in, in the months ahead. Thanks, thanks again for the video. Bye-bye.